I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Malcolm Copeland from PundiX and Michael Lucku from Digital Bits. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being on the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Ashton. Thanks for having us. You're very welcome. Uh, could you please start by giving a short overview of your companies and the solutions that you're providing in the industry, starting with Malcolm on Pundi? Yeah, so PundiX is a two-year-old startup company. Uh, we established ourselves as a blockchain specialist, you know, developing point of sale devices back in 2017. Uh, point of sale devices are flagship product today. Um, it helps customers, or consumers, and merchants transact over the blockchain um, in physical point of sale stores. So what we're doing is really um, helping adoption for mass um, use of cryptocurrencies and digital currencies such as stable coins. And um, as a, a blockchain technology provider, we also have um, developed this past year uh, a blockchain phone. It's the first ever blockchain phone in the industry. And uh, we have our own blockchain network as well uh, on the test net at this moment. And uh, we'll be going live this year in 2020 with that. Oh, that's very exciting. And Michael, if you could give a little bit of background on digital bits, that would be great. Yeah, that's great. Um, we're really focused around the same vision as Pundi X, really focused on mass scale adoption. How do we really drive into mainstream society and really utilize the benefits of the blockchain technology? So the main category that we're focused on is branded currencies. How do we bring branded currencies into blockchain and create the ability for people to, to use the assets that they've already earned. And this could be loyalty points, reward points, service credits, yeah. gift cards, and so forth. And now we're seeing a, a big uh, shift into uh, something called branded stable coins. So we're really set up as a protocol and network layer blockchain to support the creation, the movement and trade of these assets uh, on the network and really support a consumer digital assets uh, sphere and drive uh, mass scale adoption. So yeah, it's, it's a very complimentary fit uh, working with uh, mm. on the X. That's great. And now on November 5th, uh, the announcement came out that the Digital Bits token was listed on the Pundi X uh, POS system. And congratulations to both companies on that. Malcolm, if you could touch on, you know, how, what does this mean for Pundi X moving forward? And um, how do you see uh, Digital Bits fitting into the ecosystem? Yeah, I mean, like what I mentioned earlier, I mean, our whole goal is for um, opening up uh, channels to make it very easy um, for the masses, a layman person, you know, to be able to transact over the counter um, using these alternative payment methods. Um, partnering up with Digi Digital Bits was great for uh, Pundi X. Um, first and foremost, uh, we have now a huge market uh, in North America with Canada with what we think is one of the biggest and most prime project in the blockchain uh, industry in Canada with Digital Bits. So just opening that market up for us is really huge. Um, we're based in Singapore, so what we're doing is really um, creating strategic partnerships all over the world. And Digital Bits um, targeting enterprise big brands uh, is a huge factor for us to be able to, to scale our business. That's great. And could you elaborate a little bit more on how this affects the end user and the overall uh, adoption of cryptocurrency and blockchain into the mainstream industry where people that aren't currently using cryptocurrencies are now becoming more, uh, you know, ingrained in this technology? Yeah, I think um, for us being able to create foundation, uh, core platforms and partnering up with uh, companies like Digital Bits who are growing their brand uh, in Canada, who are partnering themselves with large uh, enterprise brands uh, is a huge first step in terms of first and foremost education to the end user and consumers, right? Mm -hmm. um, we are, these are trusted relationships that are leveraged to be able to produce and uh, commit to um, providing, you know, what, what people need in the real world. I mean, I think right now education is the first step um, moving towards adoption and these large brands that digital Brits uh, are targeting it is a first step towards that. Mm -hmm. And this isn't um, something that happens every day, right? I believe there's a limited amount of coins that are integrated into the Pundiac system. Um, could you give a little bit of background on you know, how many coins are listed and how integrated are the POS systems into retailers uh, throughout North America already? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at the current time uh, this in state today, we have uh, 18 uh, different digital assets that are listed on the uh, ecosystem that we develop with PDX. Uh, that ecosystem consists of our point of sale device, um, our mobile wallet, as well as our NFC cards. So one of the things we've done this year, this past year, is uh, open up our, our platform platform through uh, something called Open Platform, where 
blockchain uh, companies can uh, you know contact us directly through our website. Uh, what we're able to do there is vet uh, different uh, blockchain uh, projects to find out whether or not uh, there's a suitable and a nice synergy for us to list our token and project in, in, in our Neko system. And uh, Digital Bits is one of those. So, I mean, it's not like uh, we're very selective, but, you know, in this industry, uh, very nice, very, very early stages, we're very critical about the projects and, and, and tokens we do mm -hmm. list. So today we have 18. That's great. And Michael, now what does this mean uh, on the digital bit side now that you've uh, finalized the initialization of an integration uh, for the POS system? How is this going to help with the enterprise adoption for cryptocurrencies through your company? Yeah, it's, it's quite simple. It's, it's just more access, more access to mainstream, more access to uh, what people are already familiar with. And that's something that we was really core to our beliefs. It's not changing learned behavior. It's doing things that people already do. Um, Pontiac, I think, understands that right at their core, especially with their X-Pass card. It's something that people can physically feel, physically feel like they're spending. Uh, so it's really, that's really what we're focused on. So we want to not just shift the way people do things overnight. Um, you know, and we obviously love the fact that we can drive to this token economy, but what do we do now to create that? And that's really ultimately where we believe we can lend that lend that value uh, strategically with Pondiac, uh, introducing more brands to be a part of this, sharing that vision, creating those branded currencies on chain, and then by default, having more off ramps into mainstream society, having more access points with the digital bits and, and obviously the Pundiax platform. So that's really core to our belief. Um, we don't want to stray away from things that are confusing to people. I think that's been done a lot already in, in the blockchain mm -hmm. world, and uh, we want to kind of bring it back to simple, basic use and uh, and really share that vision with enterprise because it's, it's a little bit more easier to uh, obviously adopt and manage when it's something that they've already uh, been accustomed to. So that's really our, our core belief. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's great. And speaking of right. off ramps and on ramps, um, how uh, how comfortable are the enterprise brands and just general brands where you're making branded cryptocurrencies? Do they want to keep the the token reward system inside of cryptocurrencies or do they are they really keen on having those off ramps into fiat? Um, and does Pundiax help with that? Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 uh, it's interesting because we're obviously educating the core benefits to um, incentivizing the consumers with real value. Um, I think in recent years or in the past years, uh, people have been de-incentivized, have been confused around all these point systems, have been confused about how they actually redeem value from the things that they've done with these brands. Um, and by further incentivizing people to to feel like it's real cash at the end of the day uh, brings back that perceived value. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're really kind of focused on on driving that because indirectly that's what drives brand loyalty um, there's a whole host of other benefits that come with that especially from a blockchain technology perspective uh, portability security and, and marketing intelligence to the brand so we're able to kind of share that experience but also really support what the consumers are looking for and make sure that it's uh, it's of higher incentive uh, mm -hmm. ultimately so you know this is something that uh, it hasn't been difficult um, and and the first kind of uh, inside of us uh, driving this is some things we've done we've done events in the past with uh, loyalty live for example it was done in chicago and it was really uh, fundamental to see uh legacy brands and and enterprises and people with 25 years experience really come to those events and uh understand what we're doing so you know sharing that message and and encouraging people to adopt this new wave is uh it's mm -hmm. been it's been it's been great and they've I've also uh, really kind of looked at who has done this before or who is intending to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's driving some level of uh, competition too. So it's nice to see. Yeah. That's great. And loyalty points have been around for so long now. Um, and there seem to be some early adopters that are starting to move to this next era you know, of digital currencies. Um, did you see when you were at that conference, You know, is it starting to rub off on all of these companies? Because it seems every company can have uh, loyalty points pretty much so how uh, warm welcome are they to to jumping onto a platform like digital bits it's it's taking um some time to penetrate the education around that but once you do it starts to click um they're starting to see that these the traditional systems have inherent um, issues in friction inherent issues in customer engagement and also inherent issues in intelligence to who the consumer actually is so something that we really determined um, and that's why we think 2020 is going to be a, a pretty big year for this is uh, direct to consumer brands are really taking off and they're putting a large pressure on what's called consumer packaged goods brands brands that don't really connect with the consumers and through the deployment of 
some of these branded currencies in specific, sometimes a branded stable coin, they're able to create that direct connection. They're able to actually uh, re re-engage with that client, which has, they didn't have previously those type of limitations in technology. So we're starting to see that they're becoming more aware that they start to need to evolve with the times. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, uh, it's doing really well. It's, it's nice. And there's a lot of research reports now uh, that have been issued from some of these major uh, loyalty companies uh, in North America that expose and, and show the benefits of blockchain. And uh, we've been featuring a few of those. So it's, it's also really nice that, that it's now starting to uh, mature as an industry where we're not just talking mm -hmm. about technical constraints. We're actually talking about like, real fundamental use cases. That's great. And Malcolm, uh, there's been a few iterations of the Pundi uh, POS system as well, and it seems to be getting better and better. Uh, what are your guys' plans for 2020 on making it even easier to get cryptocurrencies into the hands of uh, retailers and consumers and maybe even have them using it without even knowing the difference between, you know, you're paying with your credit card, you're paying with uh, the XPass? Yeah, I think you both hit uh, some pretty um, interesting points there uh, that are critical for uh, the adoption point of a point of view. I think um, regarding the education part and um, uh, working with the larger brands in terms of different verticals that are very important for this industry, such as loyalty points, remittance, um, and uh, just just general payments, whether it's goods and services, over the or, or or even just you know, being able to transact without having to even know, you know, that, hey, this is cryptocurrency or blockchain, you know, like you said, Ashton, I mean, behind the scenes, this is a very technical, very difficult uh, technology to explain to the layperson. But um, if we make it really easy to use, and I think that's the key point, ease of use, and just mm -hmm. emulating existing payment solutions like credit card devices on the countertop, but being able to, you know, transact into digital currencies or cryptocurrencies, then look, we've done our job, you know, so I mean, behind seems it should be very seamless, right? So with merchants, uh, what we're doing with them for onboarding, let's say, for instance, is partnering up with local distribution, and uh, being able to uh, support the merchants for onboarding and even post sales. So, you know, once they do have a de device in their hand, you know, it's very easy for them in terms of plug and play to use operate and very little training to be able to uh, use and, and take transactions over, over the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things we're doing, um, as well as we're creating strategic uh, partnerships and integrating with um, large uh, manufacturers of point of sale devices already, such as uh, Verifone and Ingenico, which are the two of the top four um, point of sale hardware device manufacturers worldwide. So in terms of uh, scaling and uh, getting our technology out there, and blockchain-based transactions, partnering up with these large uh, point-of-sale manufacturers is a key strategic decision mm -hmm. for us because you already have existing distribution. Yeah. So um, again, you'll have folks on the ground in the field being able to work with their existing clientele through these mm -hmm. large manufacturers to be able to use uh, the XPOS platform and doing digital currency transactions you know, on our ecosystem. So that's, that's a couple of the things that we're doing. Um, I think also, What's really interesting with the blockchain and cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency industry is the openness and uh, I think uh, the opportunity to create different commercial models, uh, as well as um, offering potentially lower fees uh, to mm -hmm. the merchants to incentivize them to mm -hmm. engage with us and, and deal in, in digital currencies and stable coins, um, as well as with the uh, consumers, you know, uh, making it very easy for them, I think is really key at, at this stage moving forward in 2020. That's awesome. And I think that this partnership with Digital Bits is a great move forward into the North American markets, uh, which are fully ingrained in, in all of these POS systems. Um, and it seems that uh, this integrating into the cryptocurrencies is the next step. So, uh, Michael, what do you see as uh, your strategic business goals moving into 2020? Yeah, just similar to what we just touched on is, is really focused on propelling brands sharing and educating what the benefits are to uh, blockchain branded currencies and really focusing on various, various small, medium and large size businesses because we mm -hmm. see this as a massive shift, massive shift in, um, in, in adoption. And we starting to see that if we can, we can start to move the first movers, we have the willing followers and then we have the unwilling followers. And that, that's, that's a shift in any type of uh, mature cycle in, in an industry and in innovation. And if we can start doing the things that we've been consistent at for the past two years, moving into 2020, we'll definitely be uh, in the right position uh, to support the industry of branded currencies. And you know, really looking forward to to making this, um, you know, propel blockchain in the right space. And just like Malcolm said, it's about making things simple. We don't even need to say 
the word, this is a cryptocurrency. And at the end of the day, uh, people just want to use and spend the things that they have and they've earned. And uh, we want to make that happen. So it's it's a pretty exciting year. And I think that uh, the industry is uh, the right point for it. So. I think so as well. And if people are looking to learn more information about Digital Bits uh, and follow along with this, what's the best way for them to, to learn more? Yeah, you could uh, just check us out on uh, Digital Bits at Digital Bits Org on Twitter. Uh, you can check out our Telegram or just write directly to our website, uh, digitalbits.io. Um, and just have, definitely stay tuned for the next few weeks. We have some pretty exciting updates to come. And uh, this can be a pretty good uh, kickoff to the year. So we're pretty excited. That's very exciting. And Malcolm, how can people follow along with Pundi X's updates for 2020 as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like most blockchain companies, uh, we do have our, um, our social media channels that you can follow. So on tele Telegram, uh, Twitter, uh, PundiX.com, our main domain, as well as our sister company, FunctionX.io, which represents uh, our proprietary, uh, op actually open blockchain network that's going to be launched uh, on the mainnet hopefully this year, sometime in Q2, Q3 potentially. So they can find a lot about uh, the blockchain phone, Bob, for short, um, there as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I'll leave the links to uh, both of your companies in the description box below. That's all the time that we have for the interview today, but it's been a pleasure speaking with you both. Uh, I'm really excited for to see how this partnership flourishes throughout 2020, and all the best to you both uh, for the rest of this year. Awesome. Thank Thanks God. so much, guys. Thanks Appreciate God. it.